Hi, I'm James Catherall, founder of Catherall Audio. So MuseScore recently released a big new update with MuseScore 4.4, and it includes a whole new drumline sample library. I'm gonna walk through the new library and play a little excerpt so you can hear it and give my thoughts on the library. First, to start off, I'm not a heavy MuseScore user. I've been writing and designing professionally in the marching arts for a while now, and my main software programs for writing are Logic Pro, Sibelius, and VDL which I think helps in this video and puts me in the frame of mind of someone that's just starting out as a writer and designer and is trying to figure out how to use the software. The library was recorded with the Blue Devils drumline, which, fun fact, is actually the third sample library to feature the Blue Devils battery. The first was way back in the day with the Rumble sound library, which I believe still comes bundled with Sibelius when you download the full sound pack. Second was the drumline sample pack that Spitfire Audio released a couple years ago, and now we have the MuseScore drumline sound library. Now, we'll listen to the sample library in a bit, but first I wanna give some context. I think this update is amazing. I'm a huge fan of what MuseScore is providing to their audience and their mission to lower barriers of entry and give as many people as possible the tools to create music. That's the same mission that led me to start this channel. I'm gonna get critical of some of the elements of this new library, but to me, it's more about trying to keep pushing the limits of what MuseScore can provide for their audience and not necessarily trying to be a hater. It's difficult to truly be negative about a product that's free. If you're not a fan of it, then you can simply stop using it and move to something different and the only thing lost is however much time you put into using it and not any major financial cost. They have made huge strides in the playback engine specifically for these battery sounds. I made a video a little over three years ago and this is what their old library sounded like. And to go even further back, when I was in high school, this is what the free option sounded like. It's literally just the stock general MIDI sounds. So obviously things have come a long way and the tools and resources available to those just starting out are miles above what they used to be. And that's thanks to people like the MuseScore team that put in the effort to create this library. All right, now let's listen to this short excerpt I put together to demonstrate the library. And it's maybe a little under a minute long. I kept this pretty straightforward and I think it helps demonstrate some of the weaknesses of the library a little bit better than a busier excerpt that can hide inconsistencies behind dense rhythms and lots of moving voices. So first, let's take a look at some of the sounds. I did make some edits, but I only used things that are available for free from the Muse Hub. Each drumline instrument comes with a reverb loaded called Muse Reverb that has a tail that's a bit too long and overall is too bright of a sound. It sounds a bit like they're drumming in a small brick hallway. I switched to the Muse FX Reverb and set it to the Staff Pad Hall preset and put the knob somewhere between 11 and 12 o'clock. I put the Pro EQ below that and pulled down a bit of the highs and mid highs just to make sure it doesn't get in the way of the battery sounds too much. I do think the samples need a little bit of reverb. They cut off a bit short and this helps the sounds blend together in a subtle way. I put the send on each instrument somewhere between 10 to 20%. This changes how much reverb you'll hear on each instrument. The higher this knob is, the more reverb you'll hear on that instrument. One great thing that I really like are these sound flags. It allows you to easily change the type of sound without needing to worry about instrument changes or anything like that. I can select a note, 
press Command T, then click this speaker symbol and choose from these different sounds. There are two different implements for snares, sticks and rubber tip sticks. Additionally, you can choose to have the snares off or snares on, as well as a solo snare or a line of snares for each of those implements. I think there may be an issue with the playing techniques. No matter which one I pick, it sounds like it's always playing the ordinary samples, which side note, I wish they called center for the snares. All right, future James here really quick. Editing this video, I was doing a little bit more research and looking into it a little bit more. And I think I may have found the root of the issue here. So it actually looks like the stickings are overriding the playing techniques. So I'll show this right now in just a second. But when you put the stickings in, it makes it so that it ignores the playing techniques that you put in. So if you do like halfway and edge and all of that, it gets ignored when you put in the stickings. It just pays attention to the stickings and plays those samples. But when you get rid of the stickings and you just play the notes, it then listens to those playing techniques and you can hear the difference between the center and the edge and the halfway. So listen to that right here. All right, future James out, now we're back to regular James. For quads, you can pick sticks, puffies, or rubber tip sticks, along with the solo or line settings. Basses have the choice of hard or soft mallets, and the cymbals have the choice of 18, 19, or 20 inch cymbals, along with unison, which I'm assuming means all three of those options together. When inputting notes, you can press N on your keyboard and it'll show you how each sample is mapped. And there are more implement options in there as well. The snares have different cymbals, rims, harness hits, and a bunch of other options. Same for the quads and basses. The cymbals have most of the traditional techniques you'd expect for marching cymbals. Things like crashes, taps, zings, sizzles, and more. I tried inputting notes with my MIDI controller, but there is a bug with that right now, which I let them know about and they said they're aware of it and are working on an update that should be coming soon. But you can still input with your typing keyboard. The mapping shows you what each sound is along with what key to press on your keyboard to input that sound. It only has a few of the most common sounds mapped to your keys on your keyboard. I do wish it had the keys mapped in connection with how the notes appear on the staff. So the bottom note would be an F, then an A, then a C, and then an E, and so on and so forth for above and below the staff. At the moment, it's mapped as A, B, C, D from the lowest pitch to the highest pitch for quads and basses. It created a bit of a learning curve when I was first inputting everything. Now, the quality of the samples is great and a huge improvement over their previous marching battery options. I love that you can write in the sticking for each note and it'll play the correct samples for those notes. So you don't need to get super specific when inputting the notes themselves. You can just write it in the sticking and hear the samples played back with the sticking you want. I noticed some small issues with how the samples were cut up. It was most noticeable in these measures of consistent eighth notes. So I can hear a round robin happening in these samples, which means that when you play the same note over and over again, it's cycling between different recordings or different samples for those notes. And there's a slight discrepancy in those start times when it's switching between the different samples, which is what gives it that slight shuffle. They also made the line recordings a bit too wide for each instrument, so it makes it sound thick or dirty. Here's the solo and the line options back to back. I think they went a little too far with the humanizing of these samples, where we expect a marching battery sound to be super precise. It's a tough line to walk because if you go too precise, it starts sounding weird and computerized, but when you go too human, it sounds dirty. So it's definitely not an easy thing to do. Sampling a battery is really difficult because of those types of things and because typically a battery and a drum line is playing some of the densest rhythms that you'll get out of any musical section across any type of genre. One thing I came across that I personally really enjoyed was how MuseScore handles the inputting of tuplet rhythms. When you want eighth note triplets, you select a quarter note and press Command 3 and it creates one beat of eighth note triplets. When you want quarter note triplets, you select a half note and press command three. 
as opposed to Sibelius where you select an eighth note and press command three to get a full beat of eighth note triplets. For me personally, it just makes more sense to think of the tuplets as a division of a larger rhythm rather than the building up of a smaller rhythm. So that may just be me, but that made things way easier to input. So overall, I think this drumline sample library is a huge step forward for the community as a whole. And I'm excited to see what the future of this can be. It definitely has some room to improve, but I think it's perfect for younger arrangers and composers, as well as for college age or amateur composers trying to improve their skills. In my opinion, as soon as you're getting paid to write a piece of music for a drumline, you really should still be upgrading to VDL at this point, but this update from MuseScore has closed that gap considerably. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.